Hey guys, it's Dangani and uh, Nostalgia. The magic of remembering something from the past and holding it in your heart in a very special way. In a lot of ways, nostalgia is a great thing because we're able to remember the moments of something that made us a part of who we are today. And quite often, we get nostalgic over video games. Video game nostalgia is something just about everyone who's played a video game they love in the past knows about. You see, video games are an experience, and the memories made playing certain games in the past are bound to make us occasionally nostalgic. Now, I myself mostly grew up a Nintendo fanboy, so you're mostly going to see various old Nintendo games from my childhood for this video. But there's one other game that I will never forget. Out pops a transcendental dreamverse, a remarkable place where the real meets the fantastic. And this vast expanse of imagination has a name. They call it... Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet, specifically Little Big Planet 2, is a game I remember just playing a ton. It was a huge part of my childhood and inspired me to create like no other game. If you don't know what Little Big Planet is, it's essentially a game where you make games. The biggest part about Little Big Planet is the community. You explore other people's Earths and play their creations. Now, Little Big Planet is mostly platformer based, but the tools that this game gave you to create allowed people to push the boundaries with each and every level, and what people could make was amazing. This game inspired me endlessly, and I made so many levels as a kid. It was just so fun learning and making stuff. And Little Big Planet had such a joyful theme to it, and it's one of those games that genuinely get me emotional when I look back at it. I cannot express how much this game meant to me as a kid. It was the biggest output for my creativity and inspiration. Ah, uh, so Dangani thinks he can talk about a PlayStation exclusive game that was my childhood? You see, the team behind Little Big Planet Media Molecule. Doro, you did not literally just break through my window. Well, I mean, I heard you talking about Little Big Planet, and come on, how can I not give some input? Well, I suppose that makes some sense, maybe if you just went through the door. You know, whatever, let me just get a broom or something. All right, I'm just gonna record now, so, uh, yeah. Well, for me, Little Big Planet is a series that truly allowed my young mind to get creative and build all kinds of cool things. Think of like Minecraft, but it's on a 2D plane with derpy voodoo dolls. I got my taste of for Little Big Planet on my 11th birthday, when I received my PlayStation 3 and the second game in the series, creatively called Little Big Planet 2, happened to be bundled with it. Man, I fell in love with the game instantly as I tore through the story mode and made my first levels. I loved the game so much I wanted more. My wish couldn't be answered, however, until I received my PlayStation Vita on Christmas of 2014. Unfortunately though, there was a little hacker group called Wizard Squad that decided to hack Sony and Microsoft servers, and I couldn't play any of my games until the next day. Do you know how long of a wait it is for a 14 year old boy? I was forced to entertain myself by scrolling through the PlayStation Vita's home screen just for the noise it makes. Anyways, with the Christmas monies that my mom gave me, I downloaded the Little Big Planet PS Vita edition. Oh boy, let me tell you. This game was simply amazing. The graphics were beautiful for a handheld at the time, and they still hold up to this day. This time I bought out my most inner creativity as I aged 3 years. I was now old enough to get into more detail with my level creations. One of my levels even got on the community featured. All in all, this series is wonderful, and I definitely recommend trying it out if you haven't yet. Just, uh, not the third one though. Uh, that one's trash. Alright, time's up. Well, you see, the team behind Little Big Planet, Media Molecule, didn't develop the third game. They sold Little Big Planet to Sony, and they have been working on their even more ambitious project since. Dreams. And God, I need a PlayStation solely for this game. Or game creation system, I suppose. I believe it's an early access as of right now, but the creations that people have made already absolutely blow my mind. If you like Little Big Planet, please take a second to look at Dreams. It's pretty amazing. The potential with the dreams is absolutely insane, and I can't wait to see what comes from it all. Alright, Thora, I'm gonna talk about Nintendo games. So, uh, leave. Mmm, fine. It's me, Mario! Alright, how can you not get nostalgic over Super Mario 64? Even if you haven't played it, I'm sure you're well aware of its legacy. Sure, the controls were god-awful, but this is nostalgia we're talking about. Super Mario 64 was the first 3D Mario game where you, as Mario, you guessed it, had to save Princess Peach from Bowser. Running around 
on the bomb field being chased by the bombs, riding a Koopa Troopa shell, and the fighting the Bomb King are all things I will never forget. No other Mario game could capture the same spirit as Super Mario 64. Princess Peach's castle is a whole world within itself to explore with all the paintings to jump into. Sure, Super Mario Odyssey is great, but can it do this? Yeah, I didn't think so. And don't tell me you forgot about the Bowser boss battles, especially that first one. The pure excitement in getting the metal cap as a little wee lad had me soaring. You would see me so hyped playing this level not only because of the music being just exciting, but you knew that you were on your way to face Bowser. And when I knew I was about to face Bowser, uh, I was pretty competitive. And then there's the final final boss fight between you and Bowser. And when that music kicked in, you knew that this was no joke. And just like the first fight between you and him, you had to grab his tail and throw him hoping you'd hit one of those bombs. This boss fight was like no other, and looking back at it today, it was a god dang good one. Super Mario 64 remains timeless because it revolutionized gaming as a whole. This game was one of the first 3D games done pretty well, and Mario was greater than he ever has been before. Show just about anyone the cartridge of Super Mario 64 and they'll probably know that this was a god dang fun game. Oh ho, but that is far from the only iconic Nintendo 64 game. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is one of the most iconic games ever, and for a good reason too. If you never played Ocarina of Time, you really should. Go find a Nintendo 64 or 3DS and pick up this video game. It is a masterclass in world building gameplay and storytelling. You, the player, play as a young Hylian boy known as Link, and it is your journey to defeat evil. You are introduced to such a huge and lively world with such interesting and unique characters, and it's just so neat. Right off the bat, you wake up in Kokiri Forest, and you're tasked to kill the evil within the Great Deku Tree. Meaning, your first dungeon is literally inside the Great Deku Tree. There's monsters that were actually pretty creepy, and you had to figure out what you needed to do to defeat the evil. And once you finally got around to the first boss, you know it was going down. Now all the bosses were pretty pattern based which seemed easy enough but executing these moves at the right time was what made everything so challenging. Once you defeat the first boss and kill the evil from inside the great Deku Tree himself, he dies. Yep, you killed the great Deku Tree. And then from there on out you're set on a bigger task with the world to explore. Your child adventures give you a sense of fun wonder while you're sneaking around the guards to meet Princess Zelda. But then out of nowhere, Zelda is captured by Ganon and it's up to you to save her. She tosses the Ocarina of Time towards you before she's no longer in sight. You then find the Sacred Master Sword in the Temple of Time. Pulling that Master Sword out turns you into the adult version of Link. And what do you know? You were bamboozled! Ganon's plan all along was to have you turn forward time, because when you step out of the Temple of Time, Hyrule is no longer the same. Ganon has taken over all of Hyrule. And this is where the adventure really starts. As adult Link, you're no longer some little joke. It's real man fighting time. And you have to travel across Hyrule, face dangerous foes, maybe die a lot, to eventually face Ganondorf. That piano music playing while walking up the stairs to fight the evil himself is a memory that will probably forever be stamped into my brain. This was the final battle. Wait, no. This was the final battle. Ganon and Beast Tour. It's all up to you now, and it's all or nothing. The Ocarina of Time had one of the most exciting journeys out of any game I've ever played. The music, the fights, the story in this game are all essentially unforgettable, and it's one of the best games of all time, no doubt. Please, please play this game if you haven't. It holds a very special place in my childhood, and it's inspired me a heck of a lot. And if you have played Ocarina of Time, I highly recommend you watch this video by Goodblood. It shows how genius this game really is, and it'll probably make you cry. Not that I cried or anything. I... I would never. The Nintendo GameCube. Now this is the beauty that I played most of my childhood games on. And one of my most favorite games of all time was Luigi's Mansion. The first launch title for a Nintendo console that wasn't a Mario game. And I love it. This game is about Luigi winning a mansion. But so it turns out Mario seems to have gone missing. Also it's haunted with ghosts. So it's up to you as Luigi to save your brother and get rid of these ghosts. No other game has been able to capture the unique and gloomy style of Luigi's Mansion. 
This game was actually kind of creepy, but in a good way. Luigi is my favorite Mario character, so seeing him as a star in his own game makes me really happy. And the fact that this game is so different and weird compared to your average Mario game makes it a perfect game for Luigi. Not even Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon does it for me when it comes to the gloomy atmosphere and unique portrait ghosts. Luigi's Mansion is just so great because the gameplay is fun. The mansion is genuinely creepy and mysterious, and the ghosts in this game have such unique and expressive personalities. The very first boss in this game, being that one ghost baby, made it loud and clear that this isn't your average run-of-the-mill Mario bosses. You need wits and skill and the Porter Guest 3000. Yeah, Luigi's iconic vacuum developed by Professor Egad. With this bad boy, you can suck up all these ghosts that dare stand in your way. The gameplay in this game is so well done. You flash your light, giving you a quick second to suck up the ghosts with the Porter Guest 3000. The controls are really loose and snappy, making it a fun challenge. Luigi's Mansion is a total gem, and I'm really excited for the third game to come out. If you haven't played this game, why? Ah, Super Mario Sunshine without a doubt is one of my favorite Mario games of all time. I have so many great memories playing this game as a kid, and I recently replayed it and actually beat it the whole way through. Sunshine is so enjoyable for me because I love Isle Delfino. The sunny and bright world is just so fun to explore, and it makes this game so good. If you don't know how this game goes down, basically, you as Mario, Peach, and Toadsworth decide to go on a vacation to Isle Delfino. But you see, Isle Delfino has been totally covered in goop stuff, and you as Mario has been framed for doing all of this. They put you in jail. My man's Mario got put on blast for something he didn't even do! Look, I love Isle Delfino as much as the next guy, but god, their court system is kinda corrupt. But so be it. It's your job as Mario to clean all of Isle Delfino. Thankfully enough, you run into Flood, which just so happens to be developed by Professor Egad. You go around clearing various places, but of course Princess Peach gets kidnapped. Turns out that imposter Mario was actually Bowser Jr. Throughout this whole chase scene, you're telling me that none of these guys noticed that there was two Marios, and maybe I'm not the one who made this mess? Like, like, you're just standing there! Super Mario Sunshine has the most enjoyable times in any Mario game for me. Except that one Pianta throwing level. That level needs to be burned. The enemies and bosses in this game were super creative. This game had the first appearance of Petey Piranha, who is now pretty well known as a Mario bad guy. We also have Goober Bloober, which is not only just a fun boss, I really like his design. And let's not forget about the Manta boss. This was genuinely a scary boss for me as a kid because the goop was electric and he split into tinier versions of himself. That first cutscene of him sliding up to the surface had child me in total fear. Super Mario Sunshine is such a creative, joyful, and fun game with so much stuff to explore. When I think of video game nostalgia, this is one of the first games that pop up in my head. I dream for a sequel or something where we get more of Isle Delfino, because I really love this island. Ah, now I had three of the Sonic games on the GameCube. Sonic Adventure DX, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, and Shadow the Hedgehog. Thoro, you did not just break through my window again! Well, I mean, come on, Dangani. It's Sonic we're talking about here. Let me at least break down these three Sonic games for you. The Sonic games that you were talking about, though, are actually re-releases of the originals, which was Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 on the Sega Dreamcast. The story for all three of the games interconnect with one another though, with Sonic Adventure 1 begins with story of Sonic and his friends trying to stop Dr. Robotnik, or Dr. Eggman if you're an uncultured peasant. He is trying to revive Chaos, who is an ancient god who is the guardian of the Chaos Emeralds and the Chows. And so you play six different characters and their perspectives on the adventure. Of course you play as Sonic, who is attacking Eggman head on, Tails who is assisting Sonic and goes on his own little adventure, Knuckles who is trying to recover all the pieces of the Master Emerald after Chaos destroys it, Amy who is pretty much chasing Sonic but also helps out a lost Flicky, and Eggman robot gone rogue named Gamma, and of course the walking meme himself, Big the Cat. This game was a lot of fun to me as a kid, with the silly but serious story, with the big cast of characters to play as, and with how cool it was to play a 3D Sonic game. The next one is Sonic Adventure 2. The story follows Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, and Amy, kinda, but she's just kinda there, trying to stop Eggman from helping Shadow and Rouge. But not really Rouge. Destroy the Earth with the Death Star- I mean Death- I mean Space Colony Arc. 
Yeah, that's it. Man, Dr. Robotnik really likes his flying floating head space stations. To be fair, the one in this game is his grandfather's giant floating head spaceship, but still, it must run in the family. Man, this game's story is complicated. Not as complicated as Shadow the Hedgehog, though. Man, this game's a doozy. There's like 10 different endings to the game, with only one true canon ending to the game story, which is Shadow didn't die when he fell to Earth at the end of Sonic Adventure 2, but just got a bad case of amnesia. And depending on your choices, he could be a guardian angel or a merciless masochist. This game was one of the first games I completed 100%. Besides the missed opinions on the game, I genuinely enjoyed it and made Shadow my favorite character. He should make the final roster as Smash Brothers, but I'm not gonna get into that. But see, that wasn't so bad, Dangani, right? It only cost you two windows. Just use the door, please. Never. These were the most exciting days of Sonic for me. Skateboarding down the city as Sonic in Sonic Adventure 2 is one of those memories I'm never gonna forget. Looking back at these games, well, they've definitely aged, but 10 year old me only remembers the best experiences from these games. The worlds were big, boss fights against Chaos and Dr. Eggman were thrilling, and I was invested in these characters. I dream for the day that we get a good 3D Sonic game that takes advantage of the fun world that the Sonic series has made. You know, I think video games are really special because they're such an engaging experience. You're able to fall in love with the story, characters, world, and everything that a game has to offer. And because of that, video game nostalgia is unique. It's a feeling of happiness and wistfulness whenever you look back at a game that made you a part of who you are today. Video games are just cool. We're able to look back at these experiences with joy and, who knows, maybe even revisit these games. Because that's the magic of video game nostalgia. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. It's currently 1.23 a.m. I'm re-recording some lines, um, and I decided to re-record this outro because, uh, yeah, this video turned out way longer than I expected. This is my longest video yet. Um, shout out to my boy Thoro for helping me out with this video, the script and everything. Subscribe to him if you think you'd like more video game content because that's what he does, and he's uh, really cool, so yeah, check him out. But anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't. If you're cool, you really should. It, okay, I'm going now. Adios.